Good afternoon, uh, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another lesson. Um, this lesson I have been somewhat waiting to do for quite some time because it deals with an issue that I believe is being heinously abused by Bible believers. I'm going to run through this subject, and this subject is called uh, it's Lesson 15 of the 52 Essentials of the Messianic Faith. The subject today is the second coming of Yeshua. I'm going to read through these passages of Scripture. The reason why, because it's my belief, Bible believers do not know anything about Revelation. They don't. I'm going to read, and I'm going to say before I read this lesson, I'm going to make this statement. There are two big issues that I believe are highly abused and well touted in the eschatological market and virtually every Bible believer I've come across somehow has been gripped into believing this nonsense. The two subjects that when you study this passage, this particular lesson carefully, two subjects which can clearly see demonstrated by this subject, by this study, as being completely false. Subject number one, there's going to be a millennial reign of Yeshua or Christ. And number two, there's going to be a third temple in Jerusalem at the time of Yeshua. My belief is that if you study this lesson as I have studied it, and I will be doing a presentation of this lesson, you'll understand there is no contingency whatsoever for those two essential um, pieces of eschatological kit, for want of a better expression. There isn't. There isn't not one single shred of biblical evidence that says there's going to be a third temple. The passage is the scripture they're using to cite that. Uh, can also be referred to the, the third temple being the body of the Messiah, which came 2,000 years ago and is still with us today. Uh, some people may call it the church, but it's actually the body of the Messiah, the temple here which the Ruach Kadush resides in. The other one is the millennial reign. And that, by the way, is directly connected to a subject which I'm currently working on a project which will expound on that in greater detail to deal with uh, a misinterpretation of the book of Revelation. This subject, the second coming of Yeshua, is going to be a detailed study as best as I can make it. I'm going to try to avoid at all cost to use excuse me, to use uh, quotes from the book of Revelation unless I cannot get away with it. Most of the references that I'm using will be found in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Acts and all the epistles, because I believe that it is in those uh, 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 books that you glean a synthesized, correct uh, approach to dealing with the issue of the second coming of Yeshua. I'm going to read these passages of scripture. They will be in here. I've had to insert one passage of scripture which was not originally in this. Uh, and I will point it out uh, by reading my Bible. Uh, because it's normally on the altar cube. It's not there. And that is found in John chapter 5 verse 28 through to 29. I've had to include that. Because that destroys every notion of the millennial reign of Yeshua. Destroys every notion. Okay? So we're going to get in with this. So let's start. Lesson 15. The second coming of Yeshua. Part 1. Lesson 15. Yeshua is coming again. 1. Before he left uh, for heaven... Many times did Yeshua speak of his return. Matthew chapter 26, uh, verses 27. Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. Matthew 24, verses 33 to 40. And many others. 
Matthew 16, 27 says, For the Son of Man shall uh, come in the glory uh, of his Father and his angels, and then he, uh, then he shall reward every man according to his works. Matthew 26, verse 64 says, And Yeshua saith unto him, Thou hast said, thou hast said none, nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 through to 44. And then shall uh, appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he, and, <clears throat> and he shall send his angels with a great sound of trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four, four winds from one end of the heaven to another. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, and put a forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things uh, be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. Uh, know not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And he knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, the other uh, left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what hour to watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Number two, at the time of Yeshua's ascension, two men in white apparel, probably angels, announced his return. Acts chapter 1, 9 through to 11, which reads, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were looking steadfastly toward the heavens, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yeshua, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as you see him go into heaven. Number three, in fact, every Brit Kadash writer refers to the returning of Yeshua. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13, Mark 8, 8 verse 38, Luke 21, 27, John 14, 3, Paul, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, James, James 5, 8, Peter, 1 Peter 5, 4, and Jude, Jude 14 and 15, Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know uh, neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Mark 8.38 Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed 
when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Luke chapter 21 verse 27 it reads And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. John chapter 4 verses 3 and that reads And if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 For the Lord himself shall descend from the heavens with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in in Christ shall rise first. James chapter 5 verse 8 this reads Be ye also patient establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4 this reads And when the chief shepherd shall appear ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Jude uh, verses 14 through to 15 And Enoch also, the seventh from Ab Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with tens of thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Very interesting passage of scripture, that one. Whoever accepts the inspiration and authority of the scriptures cannot doubt that Yeshua is coming again. Part 2, Lesson 15 What will be the manner of his coming? Number 1, his coming will be with great uh, uh, demonstration and power as laid out in the passages of scriptures previously. In Mark chapter 13 verse 26, in fact the resurrection of the dead and the destruction of the heavens and the earth are connected with the coming of Yeshua. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through to 17, 2 Peter 3 verses 10 through to 12. Mark 13, 26 reads, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 16 through to 17 reads, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Second Peter three ten through to twelve But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be, in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. If that's the case, and I'm going to just keep on reading, we are looking at uh, at the end of the world as we know it. Any sign of a temple here? I'm going to labour the point on this lesson. Any sign of a temple here? No. Any sign of a millennial reign? No. 
His coming will be, number two, his coming will be with great glory. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27, Luke 21 verse 27. What a sight to behold, the appearance in the skies, Yeshua and the mighty train of angels with him. And it will be a glorious event when Yeshua comes to be glorified in his saints. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 10. When he, his shout uh, will be heard throughout the domain of the earth, when the voice of the archangel will speak, and when the harp of Yahweh will be heard. Matthew chapter 16 verse 27 reads, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Luke 21 verse 27 And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 sorry Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10 When the, when he shall come to be glorified he in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Number three, his coming will be in the clouds. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. As the clouds transported him through the skies, so the scriptures teach that Yeshua shall come in the clouds. Matthew 26 verse 64, Matthew 24 verse 30. Revelation 1 7 reads, Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which are pierced him, and all kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. Matthew 26 verses 64 reads, Yeshua saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Matthew 24 verse 30 reads, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. Number four, his coming will be unexpected. Mark thirteen thirty two, first Thessalonians five, one through to five. No man knows the day or the hour of Yeshua's return. Like a thief it will come upon the world while the, the Bible believers do not know the day or the hour of his coming yet it will not overtake them as a thief, for they will be expecting his coming. Mark 13.32 reads, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1-5 through to five. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, Ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And it's interesting he uses the term thief. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction uh, come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Number five, his coming will be universal, universally visible. Revelation chapter, 70, uh, chapter 1 verse 7, sorry, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Matthew chapter 24 verses 26 through to 27. Revelation 1 7 reads, Behold, he cometh in with the clouds. Every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. 
and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Matthew chapter 24 verses 26 through to 27. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Part 3, Lesson 15 the second coming of Yeshua will be received in two ways. One, the righteous will welcome the second coming, for obvious reasons. Paul spoke of Yeshua's appearing as the blessed hope, Titus 2.13. The scriptures repeats, sorry, the scriptures uh, represent Bible believers as looking for and waiting for the coming of Yeshua. 2 Timothy 4.8, Hebrews 9.28, 2 Peter 3.11-13. With the coming of Yeshua will be ushered in those things that will consummate the redemption. As redeemed beings with purified spirits and glorified bodies, we shall dwell forever uh, with the Lord in the new heavens and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Titus 2.13 looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Yeshua Emmanuel. 2 Timothy 4, 8 Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at the day, and not to me only, unto all them that love his appearing. Hebrews 9.28 So Emmanuel, Yeshua Emmanuel, Christ, was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin unto salvation. Second Peter 3.11-13 reads, Seeing then, that all, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise, looking for the heavens and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Number two, the day of the Lord will be a day of calamity for the wicked. The thought of the second coming of Yeshua and of judgment has always been the fear and dread of the world. Men who have, uh, have grown up under the influence of the Bible but who have not yielded their lives to Yeshua or Yahweh, are not able to be complete, uh, completely at ease because of this thought, and truly it should fill their souls with anxiety. In that day Yeshua will be revealed to them, not as one for whom they are longing, but as one whom comes in vengeance and flaming fire. Jude, 14, verse, uh, Jude verses 14 and 15. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his, of his saints to, judge, uh, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed uh, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Second Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through to, to 9 and to, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Yeshua 
Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yeshua Emmanuel, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the, uh, and from the glory of his power. Matthew chapter 24 verses 30 then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Revelation chapter 1 verses 7. Behold he cometh with the clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him, and all the kindred of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Part 4, Lesson 15 Things to be remembered about the day of the Lord. Number 1. It will be a day of eternal separation even for loved ones. Luke chapter 17 verses 34 to 36 which reads I tell you that in that night there shall be two men one in bed and one shall be taken and the other shall be left two women shall be grinding together the one shall be taken and the other left two men shall be in the field one shall be taken and the other left. Two, the opportunity uh, of salvation will be forever withdrawn. Luke chapter 13 verses 24 through to 25 which reads Strive to enter in at the straight gate for many I say unto you will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up <coughs> and have shut the door and ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying Lord Lord open unto us and he shall answer and say unto you I know ye not whence ye are three the angels will, uh, will sever, sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into fire Matthew chapter 13 verses 49 through to 50 which reads So shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and to sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth It's a ter terrible day Number four, the angels will gather together the saved uh, to be with the Lord. Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 through to 31. John 14, uh, verse 3. Which, uh, <coughs> Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 to 31 reads, then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Then he shall send his angels with great sound of the trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds or from one end of the heaven to another. John chapter 14 verse 3 reads, and if I go to and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Number five, the dead will be raised. Second Thessalonians chapter four verses sixteen through to seven uh, seventeen reads. 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through to 17 For the Lord himself shall descend from the, from the heaven 
with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 6. It will be a day of great sorrow and, and weeping. Luke chapter 13 verse 28 reads on that one. <coughs> Excuse me. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and, ja and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. Number seven, it will be a day of great joy. Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 reads, <clears throat> And behold I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. Part 5, Lesson 15 We are to watch and to be ready for his coming. Yeshua did not lay emphasis upon the time of his coming, but upon the necessity of being ready for his coming. He said, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Ma uh, Matthew 24, verses 42 because we do not know the hour of his coming, he exhorted that we be ever ready. The parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1 through 13, was taught for the express purpose of teaching the necessity for being always prepared for Yeshua's return. And similarly, similar exhortations was given to his disciples in Luke 21, verses 34 through 36. Matthew 24, verse 42 reads, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through to 13. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet their bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Then they... Then they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps. And while the bridegroom uh, tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us. And you, but ye go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went with him to the marriage and to the and to the door uh, and the door was shut afterward came also the other virgins saying lord lord open to us but he answered and said verily verily he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not watch therefore for ye know uh, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the son of man cometh Luke chapter 21 verses 34 to 36 reads And take heed to yourself lest at any time of you, uh, your hearts be in, overcharged with suffiting and drunkenness and the cares <coughs> sorry and the cares of this life and also that day cometh upon you unawares for as the a snare shall it come uh, on, on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore, and, pr and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy 
to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand therefore before the Son of Man. <clears throat> a summation of the second coming of Yeshua in the order of the sequence as laid out in the scriptures. Please make a note of the following passages of scripture. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, Matthew chapter 24 verse 44. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 reads, Behold, he cometh with the angels, sorry, behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. And, and for this one, Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. So I see here a chronological order of the events, and this happens in an instant on the same day. That day. First, he will come quickly. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. Second, he shall come in the clouds. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Three, he shall come with the train of angels and with the sound of the trump. Trump, sorry. Second, uh, First Thessalonians four sixteen through to seventeen. Number four, every eye shall see him, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess. Romans fourteen eleven. Five, the dead in Yeshua shall rise first. Second Thessalonians four sixteen through to seventeen. Number six, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Second, uh, sorry, First Thessalonians chapter four verse sixteen through to seventeen. Number seven, he shall separate the sheep from the goats. John five twenty eight through to twenty nine. Uh, Matthew twenty five verses thirty one to forty six. Eight. He shall judge the sheep first. Judgment begins with the household of faith. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. He shall surrender the judgment of the goats to the sheep. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 2. Know ye not the saints shall judge the world. Heaven and earth shall pass away with a loud noise. Second Peter 3.10 Eleven men's works shall be burnt shall be utterly burnt up. Second Peter three ten. The elements shall melt with a fervent heat. That's found in Second Peter three ten. Thirteen, the unrighteous shall uh, and the devil shall be cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelation chapter twenty verse fourteen. Number 14, he shall make a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be no more oceans. That's found in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through to 27. Number 15, the new Jerusalem shall descend from heaven, from Yahweh. Revelation chapter 21, verses, 20, uh, verses 1 through to 27. 16. The works of creation and fall, and the salvation of the cosmos shall be utterly completed, and the Shabbat of eternity shall begin. Now I'm going to emphasize what I've written in this lesson, which if you go to the 52 Essentials of the Messianic Faith, I have put this in capitals. There is no way in these passages that the contingency for the third temple the Mount of Olives splitting and Yeshua touching his feet on the Mount of Olives in these passages because as stated in these in this lesson 
the returning of Yeshua ushers in the end of the earth and that means any eschatological model that does not harmonize with this lesson is an, in, is an error as is the tribulation which in my considered opinion uh, in context of this study that the tribulation is an, enti uh, an entire book of revel is sorry uh, that the tribulation is the entire book of revelation and this book has to be fulfilled between Yeshua's first coming and his second coming and that I recommend a detailed study of the book of Revelation as laid out in Fred Miller's book Revelation and Panorama of the Gospel Age by Fred Miller which is available online see my Facebook page on this subject this is my disclaimer I'm going to add an even further disclaimer to this if this study is done in the order in which it occurs on that day there's no millennial reign the tribulation is the entire book of Revelation there's no Mount of Olives splitting there's no third temple and there's no rapture because it's the end of the world as we know it my belief is that people who believe in those notions are trying to eschatologically uh, equip the saints with er er erroneous teachings are doing this because of doing violence to the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation I hope you've enjoyed this study WASP included thank you very much and may you be blessed by this